Today we're going to be working on finishing the basic controls for the camera. But before I get into that, I kind of want to address something. It's been over a month since I have posted anything, and uh, what made me actually want to keep going is the fact that my subscriber count has been continuing to rise in this past 200. So I'm very thankful to everyone who hasn't subscribed. But yeah, uh, let me just show you what we're going to be working on today. So basically what we already had was we had, a, you know, the camera following like normal. And then also you could rotate the camera and it would snap back. Also we had the ability to zoom out and zoom in. And uh, this time what we have is we have the ability to sort of pan and rotate the character uh, with the left mouse button. And of course strafe. Uh, A and D become strafe when this is active. And then also we have the ability to auto run while doing this. So I'm just holding down both mouse uh, buttons left and right and uh, A and E to kind of strafe the character. If I press S I stop but I can keep going and then W kind of does nothing. And you can do the exact same thing with the middle mouse button. Alright, let's get started. So first I'm going to take the camera controller. If you have it outside in the assets folder just remember to drop it into player. Then I'm going to open up the player controller and the camera controller and we'll get started. So to start in our player controller, I'm going to get a reference for the camera controller. We'll hide this one in the inspector and we'll go public camera controller. We'll call it main cam. And then let's just open up the camera controller real quick. And let's go player dot main cam is equal to this. So it's basically just setting the camera controller to the script that's active, which is only one camera. So that's pretty much it. Next, let's solve a problem. So this is something I should have been doing from the start, but I didn't, and I, I didn't really think too much about it. It didn't really bother me. But all this we can simplify into one easy method. And I'll just create that right below the inputs and we'll set it up a public float access. I'm making a public just in case I need to access it through different scripts. So then inside access we're going to have two bools. One is going to be called positive and the other one is going to be called negative. Really simple. And then inside we'll create a float. We'll call it access and we'll set it equal to zero and then return axis. Now right in the middle we'll say if positive then axis plus equals 1 and if negative then axis plus equals sorry minus equals 1. Cool. Now that's pretty much all we need there. So then I'm just going to show you what the difference is. Uh, so it'll be uh, inputs dot y is equal to axis and then inside here I'm going to take controls dot forward uh, put that as the positive and then the backwards control binding will be the negative and I can just take all of this forward stuff and just comment it out and show you exactly what that does. And it basically just does the exact same thing that we needed to. So that's perfect. Alright, now I'm just going to delete all this. And from here I'm just going to start copying this one around. I'm just going to change this one to X, change this one to strafe right, and I'll just copy strafe left here. And then get rid of this. Same thing with the other one, this is the rotation. So instead here, I'm going to take rotation, put it there, rotate right, and then rotate left. All of a sudden it's much cleaner, much easier to read and understand, and yeah, it's much better. So now inside our camera controller, what we want to do is we want to update our mouse inputs. So I'm going to take this this last section here and add it to the camera rotate so that we know that if the left mouse is being pressed 
and the right mouse and the middle mouse are not being pressed, then we are set to camera rotate. And then I'm going to add else and just copy this one. And I'm going to get rid of the exclamation point in front of right mouse. So basically, this is going to be if no mouse button is pressed, this one's going to be if left mouse button is pressed, and this one's going to be if right mouse button is pressed. And what it does is it sets camera state equal to camera state dot camera steer. Cool. So now let's uh, also make some changes here. So I'm going to take the current tilt and remove it. And I'm going to put it underneath here in an if statement where if camera st state is equal to camera state dot camera none, then we'll do the current tilt. Oh, I forgot to equal sign there. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to be taking, adding a couple extra cases here. So camera steer and then camera run are also going to be situations in which this is true. Next, we need to update in, in here. Um, and actually, let's just very quickly do something. So what needs to happen is we need to change a variable in player controls when it comes to our steering. So let's create a new public bool and call it steer. I'm actually just going to hide this one in the inspector as well. Inside this, I'm going to take current pan, drop it in there, and then go if player dot current, sorry, dot steer is true, then we'll say player dot steer is equal to false. I'm going to copy this one here and then also do else for this overall uh, camera none if statement and drop it down there as well. And then here for the camera rotate, I'm going to go else if camera state duh, is equal to camera state dot camera steer or camera state is equal to camera state dot camera run, then it's going to be the exact opposite. So if not player steer, then player steer is equal to true. So now what we're going to do in here is in our in our player controller is we're going to change the rotation and the strafing to allow for that. So if steer then rotation is equal to input dot get axis mouse x and then we're going to multiply that by main cam dot camera speed camera speed there we go and then else it's pretty much just going to be this all right so basically what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to hold down the left mouse button and steer and then once we let go it lets up I'm also just going to very quickly maximize on play and that's going to be that all right so then the other thing that we need to do is for the inputs um, and this is actually going to be a situation where the inputs are going to be additional so if steer then inputs dot x are going to be plus equal these so basically rotate right and rotate left become strafe when you're steering underneath that i'm going to clamp inputs x so inputs x is equal to mathf dot clamp and we're going to clamp that uh, inputs x as the value and then negative one will be the minimum and one will be the maximum so that way we can use both of these at the same time and it's not a problem all right so we can rotate with a and d hold down the left mouse button and that becomes strafe perfect we can rotate around and that works Perfect, that's exactly what we need there. So now that that's done, 
let's also include where we auto run. And so in order to do this, we're going to need to create a new control and we're going to call it auto run. And then also inside player controls, right next to steer, I'm just going to set up auto run. Uh, first, I'm going to set up that key binding. Now, my recommendation for you is to set it up as numlock. I'm not going to be able to do that because my numlock doesn't work for some reason. So I'm going to have to use a keypad multiply. I'm just going to apply the override. So, so now that we have a key applied to auto run, what we can do is we can get the key. So let's go to here. And I'm going to do this right above forwards and backwards. And it's basically just going to be if controls dot auto run dot get by control binding down, then auto run is going to be equal to not auto run. And then after this, we're going to go if auto run, then inputs dot y plus equals axis. And then we'll just go true and false. And then below that we'll do inputs.y is equal to mathf.clamp inputs.y negative 1 and 1. From there, if inputs.y is not equal to 0, then I basically want to say auto run is equal to false. Ugh, not fall direction, false. All right, so let's try that out. All right, so press auto run. Cool. So it's doing exactly what we needed to do, and that's great. Now, here's where things get interesting, because I need to set up auto run inside here. I need to make sure that when, oh, okay, let's let's actually just start with an else if. So let's just grab the else if here. And I'm going to make a couple changes. So if either of these, so if left mouse, oh, and right mouse, and I'm going to take this, put it inside brackets, and then here I'm going to get rid of this exclamation point and then say, or middle mouse, then camera state is going to be equal to camera state dot camera run. And then this is just if left and right mouse, but uh, if left and right mouse button or middle mouse button is pressed. All right, so now we basically have run into a situation where we need to make sure that when we're setting auto run from the camera controller, we need to turn it off when the camera controller isn't in camera run state. And we also need to make sure that it is not repeatedly turning it off so that we can't use auto run while we're not manipulating the camera. What we need to do is we need to create a new variable and we'll go just create a bool here and we'll call it auto run reset and set it to false by default. All right, so in camera transforms, we'll go if camera state is equal to camera state dot camera run, then we want to set player dot auto run equal to true. And then we want to set auto run reset equal to true. Else if auto run reset. We want to say player dot auto run is equal to false and then also auto run reset is equal to false. And actually let's just take this auto run reset and let's say if not auto run reset then this. So let's try this out. So I'm going to hold down first the left mouse button and now the right mouse button if I try and move backwards, uh, if I move backwards for some reason, which isn't right, but okay, we'll have to solve that. And then let's let go. 
Perfect. And then middle mouse, and I can still hit auto run. Cool. Okay, now what I'm noticing here is that this is conflicting. Um, so what I want to do is I actually want to make this one public and then hide it in the inspector. And then I want to come here and say and not main cam dot auto run reset. So if auto run reset isn't true, then I'm not setting it to false, which should mean that what we're running we're going to run into is when I'm in camera mode and I hit backwards on the like I hit the S key, I just stop which is exactly what I want. And if I hit forward, nothing happens. And if I let go, we stop. So that's basic camera controls done. I guess next episode we really just got to start working on smoothing things out and collisions and that kind of thing. Um, collisions are going to be fun to deal with. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're making some decent progress even though I haven't released anything in a while. Things have kind of gotten a little crazy, and I've also gotten a little bit bored of World of Warcraft, so this project, while it's still interesting to me, I've kind of lost a little bit of motivation to do it, but I'll, I'll do my best to keep myself motivated. Uh, seeing those little notifications on my phone definitely helps every single time I get a subscriber. It's pretty cool to see while I'm at work. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and uh, I'll see you next time. Super trooper, super trooper, super trooper, and he sells super.